are going to be, yeah, they are going to be a bit detailed. All right, so, yeah, so let's quickly begin. So these are the contacts that you can use to reach me out. Let's quickly begin. So this is the, um, the, the what's this? These are some of the things that we're going to discuss. So like I said, uh, the first part here, you, you did, okay, you did most of these topics in NS, the introduction part of these topics. So I'm just, I've just picked some questions on each of these, uh, which we're going to discuss together tonight. Then from there, we're going to cons we're going to proceed and begin um, uh, and begin. Uh, what's this? Yeah. Okay. I I sent the the what's this the the yeah. I want us to begin parametric equations. How to differentiate parametric equations, which I believe you did part of it in NS as well. All right. So let's just uh, go through some of these uh, questions. All right, so the first question here we have is the length L meters uh, of a certain metal rod at temperature theta degrees Celsius is given by that. Determine the rate of change of length in millimeters per second, uh, in millimeters per degree Celsius when the temperature is 100 degrees and B, the temperature is 400 degrees. So I'm not going to be spending a lot of time on uh, on these questions because they are simple and straightforward questions. They are actually basics. Unless maybe in the next lecture, lecture that we're going to have, that's where I'll be maybe explaining a bit because uh, there we're going to have certain things that you've never even seen maybe. Yeah, so let's quickly begin. So we have our length, our length in meters is given by uh, 0 0.0005 theta then plus 0 0.0000004 theta squared. So the question is asking us to determine the rate of change of length in millimeters per degree Celsius. So how do we do that? So the length that has been given is what? Is in meters. Okay, so, and then they're asking us to, de de to determine the, uh, the change of length in millimeters per what? Per degree Celsius. All right, so this is simple and straightforward. All you just need to do is to differentiate this. And when you differentiate it with respect to theta, you have 0 0.0005. The zeros here are how many? There are four, so we have to put another zero there. Yeah, so let me use white because people are complaining that red is not that much visible. So we have 0 0.00005 theta. When you differentiate this, you're getting that. Then when you differentiate um, this part, you get 0 0.00008 because you're just multiplying the power with uh, what you have this side, and then you subtract from the power, you subtract one there. So you just remain with theta. So here's just a matter of replacing the 100 degrees Celsius while there's theta there to find the temperature at 100 degrees. Then you also multiply, you multiply it by 400 to, to, to find the, temp, uh, I mean, the change in the, the change in the length per temperature, yeah, which is just the same as, uh, the meters per degree Celsius. So this is how you find that. So I don't know if you have any questions on this, because, okay, on the, the main point for this question is just to differentiate, to test you if you can differentiate or if you can get the point or the concept behind differentiation. Okay, so this one I believe is straightforward. We move on to the next one. So the next one says the luminous intensity I candelas of a lamp of var I mean at varying voltage V is given by so the intensity is given by four times uh, ten to the power negative four V squared. Then they're asking us to determine the voltage at which the light is increasing at the rate of zero point six 
uh, candelas per volt. So the most important thing when you are solving mathematics is to understand the question. That's the most important thing. You ask yourself, what do they want me to do? So anytime you've been asked to find the rate at which uh, something is changing or any change, if you've been asked to find any change, it means that you're dealing with differentiation. Yeah. Or, and then if they ask you to, to sum up a lot of small, smaller, smaller, smaller uh, particles, it means that you are integrating the smaller changes. Yeah, the smaller changes. If we're talking about area, it's um, the air. Yeah, so I was, I'm just giving you the proper meaning of what it means to differentiate and to integrate. Okay. Yeah, so for integration, that's the reason why if sometimes they can give you um, an object like this and then they get a smaller part like this, a smaller area, then they ask you to find to say, find the area of this part. So this smaller area that you found, you can call it DA. And then this DA is going to have um, maybe the X and the Y, um, uh, it's going to have the length and the, the length and the, it's going to have the length and the width is so many you expect to have dx dy. So I'm sure you've done double integrals. Yeah, so this is where these uh, things come from. The double integrals, the triple integrals. Yeah, so if it's the volume, you also have dz there. Then you also have something like that. So we'll learn all these things as we proceed and how to apply them. So I was just giving you an overview about integration and what it means. So differentiation is just there to uh, tell you, or it's just there to help you to find the change in something with respect to uh, another um, parameter. Yeah, so in this case, we've been asked to determine the voltage at which the light is increasing at the rate. So they're asking, they're telling us to say the, the, the light is increasing at the rate of 0 0.6 and per volt. So we are going to find the I dV. So the I dV is going to be found by using um, differentiation using power rule. So we multiply this two times what we have there. So we get 8.10, 8 8.10 times, oh, I mean, eight times 10 to the power negative four V. So this is what we have. And then look at what we've been given there. We've been given 0 0.6, 0 0.6 what? Candelas per volt, which implies that what we've been given is this part. So we can put our 0 0.6 there, and then we say this is equal to eight times 10 to the power negative four V. So it's just a matter of uh, dividing, dividing everything like that. So when you divide, then you're going to find your voltage after using a calculator. So in this course, you are, you are allowed to use a calculator. So you just divide these two and then you find that. So that's why I'm saying these questions are simple. I'm not going to be spending a lot of time unless you have a question, that's when I'll explain it. So we'll move on to the next one. So we have also this one. So all these questions I'm solving, they're just on the rate of on the rates of changes. And then don't confuse the rates of changes and the small uh, changes or the small increments. They are two different things. So we're going to see the difference between the rates of changes which we're doing now and the small changes that we're going to do at the end of uh, this slide. Okay, so um, we have this question which says, uh, Newton's law of cooling is given by uh, theta is equal to uh, theta uh, e to the power negative kt, where the axis of the temperature at zero time is um, theta uh, degrees Celsius. And then at time, at time t seconds, what's this now? Okay, where the excess of the temperature at zero time is that, at, and at time t seconds, uh, it's theta degrees Celsius. All right, now I understand. Determine the rate of change of uh, temperature after 40 seconds given that theta is equal to that and k is equal to that. So this one is also simple. We've been asked to determine the rate of change of temperature. So whenever you just hear rate, when, when I just hear rate, remember I said when they talk about the change of something, 
with respect to something, we're talking about differentiation. But if they say rate, if whenever I just hear the term rate, it means that it involves time. Yeah, so sometimes they, can, they cannot tell you to say, find the rate of change of temperature with time. No, they, you never, actually you never hear such a question. Find the rate of something, um, the rate of change of something with time. Once you just hear rate, it means that they have already told you to say, the change they are talking about is changing with respect to what? To time. So here, this is the reason as to why they've just said, find the rate of change of temperature after 40 seconds. So meaning they expect that they, they expect us to differentiate um, this um, equation with respect to what? To time, that's what it means. So if we differentiate this with respect to time, remember the, the differentiation of um, uh, exponential functions. When you're differentiating exponential functions, you simply just differentiate the power there. And then if, if you differentiate negative kt, you are going to get negative k and then you multiply it with that because it has been given, it's a constant, this one. It's the one that has been given to be 16 there. And then we have, we multiply it with the whole function. So we differentiate the power, then multiply it with the whole uh, function. So the whole function is theta um, subscript uh, a naught there, we have a naught there. And then we have negative k t there. So after finding this, we can now just replace in the values that have been given. So the change, the rate of change of temperature, the rate of change of temperature will therefore be equal to, while is K there, we're going to put negative uh, 0 0.03, we've been given that. And then while there's theta there, we'll put 16, it has also been given. And we also have negative um, 0 0.03 there then times t, our time, uh, our, our time has been given to be 40 seconds. So even here, it's just a matter of using a calculator and then find the final solution. So it's also very simple. Let's quickly move on to the next one. So the next one says the displacement s centimeters of the end of the chief spring at time t seconds is given by S. So we have S is equal to, we have A e to the power negative k t, and then sine 2 pi f t. Determine the velocity of the end of the spring after one second. If A is equal to 2, so we've been given uh, the value of A to be 2, then k has been given to be 0 0.9. These are constants then F has also been given to be five. So what we've been given here is a function, and then they're asking us to determine the velocity uh, of the end of the spring after one second. So finding the velocity given the displacement, we know to say velocity is simply just the change in what uh, displacement. So in this case, we're using S. So Velocity is given by the change in displacement um, with time. So it's just the same as the change in displacement over the change in time. So this can also be written mathematically as d s d t. So what we're just trying to find here is d s d t. So how do we find d s d t? We're going to use uh, the product rule. So why am I using the product rule? Because I know that I have two functions which I'm multiplying here. The first function I have is an exponential function. The second function is a trigonometric function there. So we have two functions multiplying. Hence to find the velocity, we have to find the SDT by uh, applying the what? The product rule. So for the product rule of which I know you did in NS and you have an idea, or whatever that I'm going to be writing here. So we have to choose, I mean, we have to allocate um, two variables to these uh, functions. So I'm going to get one as u and the other one as v. So if I say my u is uh, a e to the power negative kt, and then um, my v is, my v is sine two pi ft. 
I have to find the derivative of this so that I can put them in the formula that I'm going to write here, because we know that the product rule states that the function, the first function times the derivative of the second function, then plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. That's the product rule. So we've, we have to find the derivative of the second and the first function. So the derivative of the first function, if we differentiate u to find u prime, we're going to get, yeah. So differentiating the exponential function, you differentiate the power. So when you differentiate negative kt, we're going to get negative k times um, our a there. We have a there, then there is e to the power negative kt. So that is the derivative. And then you also differentiate the second function, which is um, a v. So we find v prime as well. So to find v prime, you're going to have differentiate the function that you have there. So if you differentiate two pi f with respect to t, you're going to get uh, two pi f. And then um, the derivative of sine theta is simply oh, the derivative of sine is simply just cos so the the sine changes there we have i mean the trig ratio changes there we have cos then the angle still remains the same two pi f t so now it's just a matter of replacing them in this expression for uh, the product true so we have u there u is negative k a e to the power negative k t then times v prime, v prime is simply just, uh, we have two pi f, then cos two pi f t. This is what we have. And then, oh, sorry, these brackets are not supposed to be there. I'm just going to do this. Okay. So then, and then we have the other part here will be uh, v times u prime. So my v is uh, simply sine two pi f t times u prime. So u prime is, um, so here I made a mistake. I was supposed to put u, not u prime. So this is not supposed to be there. So my u prime is negative k a e negative k t there. So here, if you want, you can simplify it first. Then after simplifying it, that's when you plug in the values. So if you simplify it, you can factorize out the a e to the power negative k t. So you can you can factorize that because it's common. And then in the brackets, it means that you're going to remain with, actually even two pi f is common. We have, uh, no, we don't have two pi f this side. So we can't factorize that. So I'm going to remain with two pi f cos two pi f t, then plus, yeah, there's a minus there. So we can change the sign. We can say minus uh, k, minus k, then we have sine two pi f t. So after doing this, you can now plug in the values that you've been, you've been given. You have a is equal to that, k is equal to that, and f is equal to that. And um, yeah, so those are the things that you've been given. And the time has been given to be one second. So where there's t, you just replace with one and use a calculator to find the final solution. So here is just a matter of applying differentiation. It's a simple question as well. Okay, so we move on, we look at this one. We have this question which says, the distance X meters moved by a car in, in a time T seconds is given by, um, so the distance is given by X is equal to three T cubed uh, minus, 2t squared plus 4t minus 1. Then the question is uh, determine the velocity, determine the velocity and acceleration when t is equal to 0 and b when t is equal to 1.5. So remember what I said, if you've been given the distance, then you've been told to find the velocity. This, I mean, velocity is simply just the change in the, the, the distance or the change in the displacement 
which is just um, the change in the displacement over the change in what? In time. So this can also be written as dx dt. And then, um, and then the acceleration is simply just the change in velocity over the change in time, which, is, which can also be written as what? The second derivative. So when you differentiate this same expression two times, I mean, the, this expression two times, you get um, d2x over dt2. Yeah, you find the second derivative in other ways. Yeah, so to find the velocity, you find the first derivative. So when we differentiate the first term there, you're going to have 6t squared. Differentiate the second term, you get negative. Oh, this will give us 9t squared, not 6. So we have 9t squared. And then when you differentiate the second term there, you get negative 4t. And you differentiate that, you get positive 4. And then you can now plug in the time there. So if you plug in zero, means that the velocity that you are going to find, so when t is equal to zero, the velocity you are going to find will just be four meters per second. And then if you plug in 1.5, you put 1.5 where there's t there and then use your calculator to find the answer. For the acceleration, you differentiate this for the second time again differentiate this uh, expression two times. Yeah, so if you differentiate the velocity function, you get the acceleration. So this will give us 18t uh, minus four. Then you also plug in when t is equal to zero, you get negative four meters per second squared, which means that there was some retardation there. Then you also find it when t is equal to 1.5. Yeah, so you just put 1.5 where there's t there and find the solution. Okay, so I don't know if you have any questions, but I think this is also simple and straightforward. Yeah, so I'm just rushing through this because I know these are, these are the basics. Yeah, we've not yet even started doing uh, the, the, the mathematics you're supposed to do in, 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 what's in engineering. Yeah, so you just need to know this for the sake of uh, the topics that are coming in front, the, the, the topics that we are yet to cover. Yeah, so we have this other question which says locate the turning point on the curve. So the curve has been given y is equal to 3x squared minus 6x, then and determine the nature by examining the sign of the gradient of either side. So finding the turning point, we know to say at stationary point, at any stationary point, at any stationary point, the derivative, which is in this case, dy dx should always be equal to what? Zero. So at the turning point, dy dx should be zero. So that we have different types of stationary points. We have the maximum, the minimum, then we also have the point of um, inflection. I don't know how to draw it. We also have the point of inflection, which, which looks like this. Yeah, so the point, point of inflection, we have the maximum, also have the minimum. So now, here we've been told to say we find the turning point. We locate the turning point, meaning they're asking us to find the coordinates of the turning point. How do you find those coordinates? It is very simple and straightforward. So we simply just find dy dx from this expression. So dy dx from that expression, gives us what? 2x minus six. And then you equate this to zero. So when you equate this to zero, you're going to get, um, when you take this six to the other side of the equal sign, you divide by two, the value of x becomes what? Three. So at the turning point, the value of x is what? Three. Then the value of y at the turning point becomes, um, we find it by replacing three in the same expression there. So, this is what we're going to have. So you have y, uh, this will give us 27 minus 18. And then the value of y becomes what? Nine. So the coordinates of the, point, of the turning point is um, three comma nine. So this is the turning point, three comma nine. So we've located the turning point. 
then they're asking us to determine the nature of the turning point. Oh, I think I made a mistake here. When you differentiate this, oh, there's three here. I didn't put three there. So when you differentiate this, let me just erase everything. Okay, so when you differentiate this, you have y is equal to three x squared minus six x. So differentiating this will give us what? Dy dx will be uh, two times three there will give us six x minus six. So when you get that to zero, get that to zero, x becomes what? One. So to find y, you just replace uh, x there. And then the value of y becomes what? Three minus six, which is uh, negative three. So the turning point is simply just, um, so the turning point becomes one comma what? Negative three. Yeah, so this is the turning point. And then after finding the turning point, you can now, um, yeah, we found, we've located the turning point. Let us now find the nature of this turning point by examining the was, I mean, by, by examining the signs of the gradient on either side. So we get the value of X there. So we have X, which is one, the value of X is one. So we get a slightly smaller number than one, which I believe we can get 0 0.9. We also get a slightly greater number than one, which can also be one point. Um, we can even get 1.1. 1 .1. And then we find the gradient, meaning what we've been given here as our gradient function is dy dx. So dy dx is also known as the gradient function. So you replace the values of x, this x and that x there. So when you put 0 0.9 where there's uh, x there, so when you put 0 0.9 where there's x, then you subtract six from that, you're going to get, um, okay, so let me do this. We have six, where there is x, we put 0 0.9, then we say minus six. Or let me write it properly. So we have to say uh, dy dx, when x is equal to 0 0.9, will be equal to, uh, when you put 0 0.9 there, then you get something like a 5.4, 5.4 minus 6, you get a negative 0 0.6. Yeah, so we also have to find dy dx when x is what? Equal to 1.1, which is slightly greater than um, 1. So we put 1.1 while there's x there. So we're going to have 1.1 times 6. This would be 6.6. .6, and then we subtract 6 from that. Uh, we get 0 0.6 as the solution. So now, when you check this one, this one is negative. So this dy dx is called the gradient function. So the gradient of this function at the point 0 0.9 is negative 0 0.6. So on the left, we expect the curve to be like this. On the left side of one, uh, the gradient is negative. So meaning the curve will be like that. And then at one here, when you replace one, what is x there? You're going to have uh, six times one, that is six. Six minus six, you get a zero. So the gradient will be zero there at one. So when the, at the point, uh, be, at any point before one, the gradient is less than uh, zero. At one, the gradient is zero. And then at uh, any point that is greater than uh, one, which we uh, tested using, 1.1, the gradient is positive 0 0.6. So we expect the gradient to be like that. So when you take the, um, the curve, the way it's, um, it's looking here, it tells us to say, this is a minimum uh, value. So the nature of this stationary point or the nature of this, um, uh, the nature of this turning point is simply just a minimum. So it has a minimum value. So this is how you, you determine uh, the nature using, um, yeah, by examining the sign of the gradient on either side or on both sides. Right. So you can also use the second derivative to determine the nature of stationary point. It also works. Okay. So 
we look at the small changes. So this is where, I mean, this is the point where I was saying, um, there's a difference between the small changes and the, 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 the oasis, the changes that we looked at at first, the rates of change. So a lot of people mistaken this, the rates of change, the, rest of, the rates of changes and the small changes. So this is how we deal with small changes. So we have a question here which says, given that y is equal to 4x squared minus x, determine the approximate change in y if x changes from 1 to 1 uh, to 1.02. So the formula for the small changes is simply just that dy dx is equal to the small change in y over the small change in x. So here they're asking us to, uh, to, to, to determine the what? The approximate change in y, which is just the small change in y. Meaning when we cross multiply, the small change in y, which is the approximate change in y, will simply just be equal to the small change in x times dy dx. So where do we get dy dx? It's simply just by differentiating this function. And then where do we get the small change in x? Simply just by subtracting what you've been given, that is going to be 1.02 minus one. So the small change in x is simply just 1.02 minus one, and this will give us 0 0.02. And then to find dy dx, dy dx, we simply just differentiate 4x squared minus x, which gives us what? x. It gives us x, I mean, four, I mean, 8x minus one. And then we also need to find the value of this point at uh, the initial point there, which is one. So the initial point there is one. In other words, I'm trying to say, we find dy dx when x is equal to one. So when x is equal to one, dy dx becomes what? We replace one there, meaning this will be what? Um, eight times one minus one, which gives us what? Seven. So we have the value of dy dx, which is seven. So uh, the small change there is simply just 0 0.02. So we put 0 0.02 there. And then we also have dy dx when x is equal to one, which we found to be seven. So you just have to multiply that. So when you multiply 0 0.02 times uh, seven, you simply just get uh, 0 0.2. 1.4 as the solution. So this is how you deal with small changes. So the most important thing about the small changes is the formula. So the formula is simply just um, what, you, what you are seeing here. This is the formula for the small changes. Just say dy dx is equal to uh, the small change in y over the small change in x. Yeah, so sometimes they can ask you to find the small change in x given all these other uh, changes. So you just need to know how to manipulate the same formula. All right, let's look at the other questions. Okay, so let's look at how we can differentiate parametric equations. So I think for this one, what I'll do is, uh, let, let me end the meeting right now, then use the same link to join so that we can proceed uh, with, the, with the parametric uh, equations because the time is almost up. So let me just end it right now, and then we start the parametric equations.